Tanrı'yı düşünüyorum. I wonder about God. Tanrı kimdir? Neye benziyor? Tam olarak ne yapar? Who is God? What is God like? What does God do? Her türde. All sorts of people tell me about God. Tell me what they think. Give me their take. Even people who don't believe in God seem to have a lot to say. Hristiyanlar, Christians say God is holy, he's all powerful. They say he's love. They talk about his judgments and about his mercy. Tanrının, they tell me, God is a creator, the creator of all things. Tek bir tanrı olduğunu söylüyorlar. They say there is only one God. And yet they also say that God has a son. Jesus. Well, what does that mean? Where on earth did they get that idea from? We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things, visible and invisible and in one Lord, Jesus Christ. This is Lake Iznik, about four hours southeast of Istanbul, in North Turkey. Beneath its waters lie the ruins of a palace, the Senatas Palace. In late spring, AD 325, 1700 years ago, it was in this palace that one of the most important conferences of Christian church leaders took place. At the end of the meeting, they produced a remarkable document, one that Christians still quote Sunday after Sunday in their church services. Council of Nicaea is held in 325 AD. It was a council of bishops, and so bishops from all over the empire were invited. We think that there were somewhere between 250 or 300 present, mainly from the east, but it was an early ecumenical and involving people from both East and West. Some people say that it was here at Iznik, then called Nicaea, that Christianity started. Some people think that it was here that the Bible was put together, or that it was here that just four stories of Jesus' life were chosen and many others discarded. But this is not true. These men didn't invent Christianity. There had been Christians in this region since the very beginning, nearly 300 years before. Christian books of the Bible, what is called the New Testament, had been in existence for more than 250 years. No, the purpose of this council was to set down a statement, a concise summary of what Christians believed about God, a creed to be used in churches everywhere. The earliest function of creeds was, was probably connected with Christian baptism. That is, it was, it was an affirmation that someone made at the point of being baptized, professing their faith in God their, uh, and their faith in Jesus. The Creed of Nicaea was like a manifesto. If you wanted to know what Christians believed, here it was. A summary in less than 100 words. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of the Father. What the meeting at Iznik was doing was to guard the Christian faith against false teaching. These men were determined to maintain a pure understanding of what the books of the Bible actually teach. The creed was also like a story, telling people the unending story about God, who he is and what he's done. Telling a story about a man called Jesus. Christian faith is rooted in history, and the person of Jesus is rooted in history too. So we know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea about 2,000 years ago. As a child, he was a refugee in Egypt, and this is fondly remembered by people in Egypt, of course. We know that he had to travel as a refugee with his mother and father uh, to Egypt, and then returns to the north of Israel, where he spent most of his young adult life. And then he starts a very public ministry, traveling around the towns and villages, talking about the coming kingdom of God. He was hugely popular, not just uh, with the Jewish people, but with all sorts of people who lived around about. And he was popular uh, because of his miracles, of course. So Jesus used his power to raise the dead, to heal the physically sick, 
uh, to feed the hungry. These are not uh, private happenings taking place somewhere. They're very public events. Uh, what do we know about Jesus? We know where he was born, what he did, who he spoke to, and we can actually visit the places that he visited in his day. One evening, Jesus and his followers were by the Lake of Galilee. Jesus said to them, let's travel across the lake. So they got into a boat and set sail. One of the stories I love most about Jesus is when uh, his disciples are in a boat and uh, many of these disciples have grown up, used to water, many of them fishermen, and yet they're scared for their lives because a huge storm has hit the Lake of Galilee. And Jesus stands up and just commands the storm to be stilled. And instantly, billions of cubic litres of air and water stop circulating. Then the wind calmed and the lake became still. And the terrified men looked at each other and said, Who is this? Even the wind 